So what first attracted you to the Regeneration Music Project? Um, well, I guess as a DJ coming up in the clubs, hip hop clubs in the 90s in New York, we were always mixing different genres of music. And that was before they called it mashups. You know, you just took a biggie a cappella and you put it over an ACDC breakbeat or whatever. And that idea of expanding people's ideas of music that they like and listen to has been interesting to me. So this project seemed cool. And, you know, Premier, DJ Premier is kind of my, one of my idols as a producer. And just the fact that he was down with it, I knew it was somewhat legit. Then when Eric and Zigaboo became involved, it obviously exponentially became more exciting and promising. And for each of you, what attracted you to, to being involved? Uh, me, I, they just asked me. And when I heard who was doing it, I said yes. It would be a challenge. They told me I had one day to write a song um, that Mark was producing and who the band was going to be, and Zig was going to be there, some of the Daft Kings, Trombone Shorty. I mean, that's like saying, do you want $5 million with no taxes? Yes, I do want $5 million with no taxes. <laughs> so I was, I was amazed to be asked. I was happy. And um, obviously you do, Mark, you do mix genres quite a bit, but were you nervous at all of stepping into this and working, you know, really focusing on a new genre? Yeah, I think that, you know, one thing that being any kind of creative person, any type of project you go into, it's, it's nerve-wracking because, you know, there's something very personal about the creative process. And like Erica said, you know, we got lucky that we only had a day for her to do her part, a day to do the band. and. We got lucky because we hit a rhythm, but you're never guaranteed that. You can have a day, you can have the most talented people in the room, and you can just hit a brick wall and that, that's just it. And so we could have easily come out of there with something that was kind of average or worse, and none of us had worked together. I'd never worked in that studio before. It was like outside my comfort zone. I never tried to make a jazz record. Never worked with Zig or Boo. No, no, Zig, what did you think? Well, um, I had the opportunity to meet Mark for the first time about a month before that and uh, we kind of got a chance to chat a little bit and I was asking him, listen, you know, I know uh, I've been in this game long enough to know when opportunity knocks, you know, you got to listen. So uh, when I did do all my homework and find out who Mark Ronson really was, and I, I jumped to that- It was too late to say no. <laughs> I, I, I jumped to that opportunity. Stop. And because I knew it would be something that would be really <coughs> professional. So uh, I wasn't let down the least bit, and then we had a we had a, a, a beautiful cast of musicians that was involved. In the, the Dap Kings, excellent musicians in the studio, and uh, they did their homework. Everything started to gel, to gel in. So it was it kept on being, oh that's a winning situation. And then I found out Erica Badu was going to be on there, and then I said, whoa, uh, this is a win-win situation here. And then it just kept escalating. And then the next thing I know, most Def was in the studio, and they said, "Oh, wow, this is just getting bigger and bigger on me," you know. So I was getting excited because, like I say, I always look for opportunity to work with professional people and people that know the game and have a lot of respect for each other. And I thought it was an excellent idea for me to be involved, and I was just glad to be a part of it. And how would you say that this might influence some of your future work, this experience, this opportunity? Um, <clears throat> because I had to let go of everything in order to completely write a song in one day. Bridge, choruses, backgrounds, and everything. And I don't, I don't generally do that because I'm kind of you know, hard on myself a little bit but I had to let go of everything and have faith. And the music is what did it, you know, and just the, the energy of the people. It was good, it was good. It was a good marriage. It was a good one. Good combo. <laughs> Cut. No. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> um, I mean, that, I, I don't know, I feel like I always learn something from each project, but 
It was just kind of lucky. It was just one of those things that you just went in for two days, let's see what comes out, and then you walk away with this thing that's kind of as good. You know, Nick, who played bass on it, who played bass on most of the records I work on from Amy Winehouse to my own, um, he came back and we had been back in New York for a few days and he was like, it's weird, I just played this for my girlfriend, Kate. She's like, this is by far the best thing that you've ever played on. And, it, you know, I've had that feedback from other people who say it's, you know, it's one of their favorite things I've ever done. And, um, yeah, it just shows when you get sort of some amazing people together in a room and just create, which is something that we don't do as much anymore, that it can be, you can get some magic something. Sorry, I'm putting myself to sleep with that answer right there. Wait, are we? You know, you know, I'm sorry. I was gonna say... How long was I asleep? I don't <laughs> Wait, know. here's it. I don't know. I was gonna say that when I spin the song in the club, yeah. I can spin it between Biggie and Frank Sinatra. Anywhere. It's like a, a genre. A genre. Yeah. Say A genre. Like a genre. Genre. Genre linker. A genre list. Yeah. Yeah. Song. Yeah. It's the meters drums. It's, yeah. Yeah. You a fool for them drums. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> what do you feel like you maybe learned <laughs> from this experience yourself? Well, you know, <clears throat> naturally in life, you want to learn from all your experiences, whether they're good or bad. I, I work with other artists on other projects. Sometimes you know you have all of these people that's there, and you know you know what they bring to the table. And um, maybe the music is lifeless, or, or maybe the production is just too overworked. Or, and there's a lot of things can go wrong. But for some reason or another, this project is the moment. It's like a moment in time. I don't think any of us is going to forget any time too soon. We're all going to go on and do better and bigger things, I'm sure. I know they will. But I'm just saying, for me, it's a moment in time where it's unforgettable. Uh, because I had a chance to work with two very professional and well-respected artists. And uh, that's something that I'm going to keep right here. I'm never going to forget that, whatever whatever way we travel. Lastly, um, I know you guys haven't seen it yet, but even just having gone through the motion of it all, what do you hope that people take away from the project? I'll let you be last. Yeah, please. Yeah. I'm gonna let you be last. Okay. <laughs> so here you go. I'm gonna right. I'm 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 just say. <clears throat> I hope um, that people feel just to feel whether it's better or stronger, different, but just to feel and um, follow their hearts because that's exactly what we had to do. You know, if, if I can say that, I think we just followed our hearts, and I, I hope people are inspired to do that too. To add, guys? Well, bet not say nothing. I just hope that uh, it perpetuates live music, and you know because that's how we eat through our energy through working through live music and creating music, and you know there's a lot of other musical fans that want to come and see this, and they want to see uh, oh well I've never seen uh, Erica. And I know I've never seen Zigaboo and Erica together. And I know I've never seen Zigaboo and Erica and Mark together. And wait a minute, I've never seen a Dap King. So all of these people coming together, mixing together, and making music and bringing all the expertise to the table. And listen to this music. It's got, it's got ism. It's got, it's got all this drive. And whether you want to say it's jazz or whether you want to say it's hip hop, I want to say it's a collection of all kind of professional thoughts and, you know, just everybody bringing their own toolbox to the table and saying, here it is, this is what I'm going to contribute. So I think everybody was coming from right here on this project. And you know, we don't have that many musical film like this out right now. I've seen a few. But I think it's a good time for this one to be out there. We hope it's more than very successful. Anything to add? Yeah, I think that just in the spirit of the project, it's just, 
Is that when they play the music when you have to get off the stage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, uh, this is the last uh, part of church. Okay. When the story's getting exciting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, basically, <laughs> I think that merging these different kind of producers with, you know, having Skrillex in the doors in these things, I think. Mm -hmm. You're turning on Skrillex fans to the doors music that they might not know. And I came up in a time when, like, all my favorite hip hop groups sampled Zigaboo's drums and their meters, but maybe kids don't know now don't know as much like the breaks or where that stuff comes from. So that's why we kind of called the record Alamo de Lease because it's really we're in New Orleans making a jazz funk record, and he sort of invented that as far as we're all concerned. So it's good for kids to go back and know that music.